Ok, Bubbleverse. 8. Pogrek. This chapter beta read by Lady Columbine of Mistal. Rage Zerina. I had to say, they'd improved the design of the cold suit I'd been wearing when I visited Fazari Bite. This one was just that little bit more comfortable, and the hair closer to the unattainable ideal of not even being aware I, I was wearing. I... <laughs> also, they'd fixed the issue I'd had last time of not being able to reseal properly after venting heat. Not that I was going to need it this time. I stood with Saduk and Thwika in the waiting area, at the spaceport, sunk into the ice at the south pole of Triton. The incoming ship used bubbler low-reaction drive, so we didn't have to worry about dangerous emissions as it came in for a landing. For a change of pace, I was in the cold suit, while Saduk and Thwika were dressed appropriately for the climate, that is, decorative sashes. The design of the spaceport was deliberate. On the surface, it was a blistering 35 Kelvin, enough to make bubblers need to put on protective tentacle socks and reflective outerwear. Below the surface, where the tenuous sunlight never fell, it was shirtsly weather for them, or would be if they wore shirts. The Triton colony was going well, with more living space being excavated all the time. They were starting a couple on Pluto and Charon as well, but these would possibly need to be evacuated. While the pair took their swing inside Neptune's orbit, I could empathize with the bubblers. They needed living spaces that could be guaranteed to be below a certain temperature. And when the celestial body, Euron decides to visit the sun a little closer, that's just not fair. But I toured the bubble labs on the north pole of the planet, escorted by Sadok and Thwicker, and been greeted by more bubblers than I'd ever met in person before. They were intensely curious to meet me. My level of celebrity on Fazirip was apparently quite impressive, and I ended up signing plushies, models of the distant knowledge and jovial diveri and at least one lab report. The colony included families, because bubblers are just as social as we are. One thing they had no lack of was potential living space, so I got to meet a few of the kids. Thwika ended up being front and center there, chatting faux casually about conditions on Earth, while their eyes got wider and wider. Of course, she was constrained in what she wanted to say, because her mother would almost certainly be watching the recordings, and there was no way she was going to admit to swimming in water and playing soccer. But what she on Coty say was impressive enough. See this chunk of nitrogen? Yeah, it's a gas there. Humans, a breathe. Wolf. But all, but all that had been the prelude to the big show, which was why we were waiting at the spaceport. The incoming ship was a diplomatic transport from the Tanarak homeworld, bringing the equal above all, cute title, I thought, and absolutely Tanarak, and his kid Pogrek, a boy as I understood things. At some point, he'd have to be disillusioned of his idea that the son of a planetary leader would afford the Tanarak more prestige and trading rights than the kid of an astrogate. But that was something for the future. Saduk was friendly, personable, possessed a wicked sense of humor, and had utterly floored them when he was invited onto a popular nighttime talk show. Thwika, on the other hand, was fitting in amazingly well at college, and the publicity shots of her clowning around with the other kids hadn't even needed to be staged. They were well known, and the public loved them. Really, 
There was no contest. The ship settled into the pad, and we watched as the three human guards emerged and took up station around its base. As I understood it, they'd ridden the ship from Triton to Fazirip, then on to Tanarak, then back to Triton. No trouble had been anticipated. They had three along, so they could do it easily with eight-hour shifts. But this was the biggest diplomatic coup we'd had since our first contact with the bubblers themselves. And Jewelry One was determined to make it go right. The presence of humans on board, especially since the bubblers had gleefully broadcast our capabilities to all their galactic acquaintances, was basically an ironclad guarantee that nobody would mess with the ship. Next out were the three bubbler guards. They were strictly ceremonial and knew it, but they weren't letting that spoil their moment. As they assumed their positions with all the flourishes and flair they were capable of, I nudged such enthusiastic ante. Do you blame them? He murmured back. They get to stand guard while alongside you guys. We don't die to war, so that's about the biggest honor they can imagine. They'll be talking about this one day for years to come. <sighs> Hi, who? That made sense. It was also one of the reasons I liked them so much, even ignoring my long-standing co-ambassadorship with Saduk. They were so earnest about being our friends and allies. Certainly they took all due care when dealing with the temperature levels that had given rise to us, but they weren't scared of Ogiyuis. Dealing with them was like looking into a mirror that only reflected our best natures back at us, and it was hard not to want to live up. Finally, the last part of the honor guard were the Tanneret. There were six of them, presumably to match the number of human guards and bubblers both. Now, uh, these guys were trained soldiers, I could tell. Looking vaguely, like five-foot-tall, purple and green bipedal crocodiles, they wore flashy uniforms, incorporating body armor, as my cold suit informed me and carried the feared Tanarak heat guns, unloaded, according to the cold suits. Wouldn't have been overly worried even if I hadn't known that. I knew damn well that Tanarak equal above all had been advised that even John loaded weapon on Triton was one too many. If any of those heat guns had a charged power pack, it could sink the whole deal. And the Tanarak really really wanted to prove to us that they could be trusted as allies. Still, they put up a good show. Six soldiers were harder to coordinate than three, but their moves were in total sync. After a certain amount of step, back step, tail sweep, flourish, they snapped into position in two rows of three, flanking the bubbler guards. After that... The equal above all emerged, with his kid following one pace behind and to the side. They were dressed in the equivalent of heavy coats. This made sense, given that their comfortable temperature range started where bubblers left off. I heard Twika make a quiet but amazingly realistic snorting noise, which was kind of impressive. Given that bubbler evolution hadn't blessed her with a no. Oh, she murmured. This is his son's day, and he's, he's still making it all about himself. She had a point there, but the pecking order had to be maintained. In any case, diplomats gotta do diplomacy, and that was me and Saduk. We moved forward, with Thwika between us. Greetings, equal above all, Saduk said. You know who I am, and you're probably aware of Lieutenant Hernandez's identity. I was damn sure they knew who I was. Saduk had introduced me to the equal above all's predecessor in office, 
the much more martially titled Commander Prime Ultra, the sight of me pouring water over my head, and the news that humanity had access to FTL tech, had caused the entire T. Conquest fleet to advance to the rear, to borrow a time-honored phrase and restrict their expeditionary crews to Tanarak space. My face may have been even better known by the Tanarak than by the Buck. I know of you both, the Tanarak High Commander acknowledged stiffly. His translator-transmitter was set to a gravelly tone that had to be a deliberate attempt to impress us. I got the impression that Tanarak society taught them from infancy onward that they were better than everyone else. As conquest-oriented cultures throughout human history had learned, it was a hard attitude to shape. Still, he was making an effort, and that was a good thing. This is my male offspring. His title is long and illustrious, but I was advised that names need to be kept short and simple, so he may be referred to as Pograk. Understood, Sadduk said. Greetings, Pograk, daughter. This is my daughter, for ease of communication. She goes by the name Thwika. She will be showing you around the school once we get back to Earth, and helping you settle in. My read on Tanarak body language wasn't as comprehensive as it was with bubblers. But to my eye, Pograk didn't seem to know what to say or do. Either his father hadn't given him any lines, or he'd forgotten the ones he'd been coached in. He just stood there and stared at us. Which put us at an impasse. If either I or Saduk stepped forward, it could be seen as a threat against the person of the equal above all. And his guards could get hurt trying to protect him. Well... We couldn't just stand there all day. Fortunately, Twika took the initiative and broke the stalemate. Hypograk, she said, waving her tentacles in a friendly manner. Come on, I'll show you around the colony while they're refueling the ship. Pograk hesitated, then came forward. Greetings, Twika, he said. He didn't have quite the gravelly tones of his sire. But he was getting there. I would like to see your colony. From the way he said the words, I got the impression of a person who'd had the concept of friendly carefully explained to him, out of a dictionary by someone who wasn't quite sure what it meant either. Excellent, Swika said, as Saduk and I stood aside, before he could object to his... She grabbed him by one thick-fingered paw. Dot e. Where do you see the sunrise room? They project an image of the rising sun on the wall, so you can watch it without actually standing in sunlight. But that's nothing compared to... Her voice faded into the distance as she more or less dragged him along. One of the Tanarak guards moved briskly to follow with a bubbler guard following suit as well. Sadok and I shared a glance. Well, a thing happened, he said. Is... Is your offspring always so... volatile? Asked the equal above all, looking a little surprised. And so uncaring of protocol. Sadok chuckled and indicated me with one of his prosthetic tentacles. Trust me, she learned from the best. I had to admit, it was true. 